It's in the ninth chapter of Luke's Gospel that we first learn that Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem. Jesus has tried to tell the disciples on multiple occasions what his fate must be and that he must go to Jerusalem in order for those things to come to pass. And now we are entering Jerusalem, but not before he's had a full ministry in the Galilee, not before he has been preaching and teaching and healing, not before he has been highly criticized, not before many things have happened will he begin to enter Jerusalem. And the road that he takes, according to Luke's gospel, is a road through Jericho. He actually makes his way through Jericho as he is coming into Jerusalem. We know some things about that road to Je from Jericho to Jerusalem through Luke's gospel and through our other gospels as well. But particularly in Luke's gospel, we learn some things about that road. We learn that that's not a good road. It's a road that's a heavily traveled road because it's traveled by merchants who are engaging in their trades. It's obviously traveled by those who are coming and going from Jerusalem on high holy days. So we can imagine that as we are seeing now, it's almost Passover in our scripture, there's probably a lot of people on that road coming and going, trying to make their way to the temple for Passover. And that makes that road a particularly interesting and attractive one for bandits and thieves, because they know that the people who are coming and going might have things of value for them to steal. So that road becomes a road that is of real interest to them. And we hear Jesus talk about that in the parable of the Good Samaritan, that the man is actually attacked by bandits on that road. This is part of the reason. It's a, it's a busy road and people tend to have things when they're traveling on that road. And this is the way by which Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem. Now, we notice some interesting things in the passage that we have in front of us today. And one of the interesting things that we notice about this passage is who's there. It is almost Passover. It is almost that time. It's High Holy Days. So when Jesus makes this trek through this road into Jerusalem, there are probably a lot of folks traveling that road. But what we see in this text is that the folks who are traveling this road know something about Jesus. Because this multitude of disciples who have suddenly surrounded him in Jerusalem, and this is the first time he's been to Jerusalem in his ministry in Luke's gospel. This multitude of disciples have seen his acts of power. They've seen what he does. They've seen what he's capable of doing. And they are the ones who are lining the roads and spreading their cloaks on the ground for the royalty that's coming before them. They're waving their palm branches. They are ecstatically proclaiming the goodness of God in their midst. So then we have to wonder, how long have some of these folks been traveling with Jesus? Have some of them been traveling with him since the Galilee? Is it possible that that hemorrhaging woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 entire years and wanted to just be able to touch the hem of his garment, could she be one of the ones who's come with him to Jerusalem? Could Jairus, the synagogue leader, whose daughter has been brought back from the dead, 
Could he be one of the ones who has come with Jesus to Jerusalem? What about the folks that he might have met up with in Jericho? We know Zacchaeus climbed that sycamore tree trying to get a good look at him. And Zacchaeus got called down by name out of that tree so that Jesus could go and be with him. Could Zacchaeus, or maybe some of the other cheating tax collectors and sinners, could they have joined that throng and gone with Jesus into Jerusalem? Because we know that someone there knows Jesus and knows what he's done. So someone's followed him there. And they're faithful enough that they are shouting their hosannas. They are calling out and acknowledging the goodness of God, even when the Pharisees tell Jesus, you need to make him stop. And we wonder, are they really focused on the fact that everybody should be gathering for the holy days and not worshiping this man among them? Make them stop, Jesus. We have other things to do. We have so many things for which to prepare. Why are they worshiping you? Today, we too are the ones who are accompanying Jesus on the road. We are accompanying Jesus on this treacherous road into Jerusalem. It's a road today that's probably filled with lots of people because the high holy days are coming for us all. The merchants have all their wares that they want to sell so we can fill our baskets. The bandits lie in wait. What will we choose to do? As we move into this week with Jesus, as we move down this road with Jesus, what will we choose to do? Will we choose, as the faithful who have accompanied him into Jerusalem, to proclaim with loud, shouting voice the goodness of our God? Will we shout so that no one can make us be quiet? Will we shout with everything inside us? Or will we let the bandits steal our day, steal our voice, steal all that is holy from us, and distract us? and take us away from our mission. Because this holy week of ours is a week for us to praise. It is a week for our voices to be heard above all the din and racket of the world so that everyone knows that we are praising our God. That is this week. And nothing should take our voices away from us. We are called in these days to proclaim the goodness and the mercy and the love of our God so that all of the world, all of the world, will come to know 
just how beloved God's people are. And if we were silent, the whole of God's creation would be crying out. But we needn't be. We needn't be silent. This is the time for us to be heard. This is the time for us to empower others to walk our journey with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.